Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say happy birthday to Jamie, who has a birthday on September 10th. And happy birthday to Victoria from Holland, Pennsylvania, who is turning six on September 11th. Happy birthday to you both. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you to Flynn for suggesting this topic. This is a story about a girl named Esther who lives in a very quiet, safe place called Shirewood. Esther dreams of seeing the world outside of where she lives. She has read stories about the mystical forest and the creatures who live there. When Esther is walking home this day, she comes to the fork in the road she passes every day. If she goes left, she will go to her home. If she takes the right fork, she will take the road that leads to the unknown realm. Esther decides to go right. What is going to happen? The Magical Book of Dreams Once upon a time, in a world full of magic and fun, there lived a little girl named Esther. She lived in a small village far from any castles at the very edge of the known kingdom. They were surrounded by beautiful gardens, flowers, sparkling streams of water, and protected from the elements by moss-covered rocks and tall, towering trees. It was a wonderful and quiet place, far from the hustle and bustle of the mystical forest. Esther sat in her chair, looking out the window, daydreaming again of the world beyond, when she was suddenly interrupted by the sound of Headmaster Eileen's voice. Esther, it's only the first week of school, and you are already daydreaming about being somewhere else. Pay attention, child, or I'll send you home with yet another note for your mother, boomed Headmaster Eileen. Ah, yes, I'm sorry, Headmaster. I'll pay attention. I won't do it again, Esther quietly said. If only that were true. (sighs) sighed the headmaster. Headmaster Eileen droned on about the importance of the topic they were studying, while Esther pretended to listen, staring off toward the blackboard instead of the beauty of the world outside the classroom. All I want to do is explore the world, to visit the peoples of the mystical forest, the stories of which she had been read as a child. And what about the world beyond the kingdom? Her village, Shirewood, was ideally located for exploration of the unknown realm and used to have many explorers stopping for food. The explorers stopped coming many years ago after word spread that most who entered the unknown realm never returned. Okay, class, that's it for today. Don't forget to bring some plants from your garden that you planted over the summer to school tomorrow to show the class. How the natural world changes with the seasons will be a part of our lessons in the future. We all need to learn how to live with respect to the world around us. Class dismissed, Headmaster Eileen said as she grabbed her notes and walked out the door. Leaving the schoolyard, Esther began her long walk home alone. Most of her friends stayed after school to play or attend clubs, but she had chores to do before dinner. Her family lived in the quietest part of this already all-too-quiet village. They raised various animals that needed to be looked after and who, in return, would give them nutritious food and drink. 
She walked along the dirt path that led to her home. It was surrounded by moss-covered stones and vines that bloomed in summer. To the sides, there were gardens and homes with smoke rising from their stone chimneys, from the fires that cooked food within. She eventually approached a fork in the path. The direction leading to the left led to the part of the village where she lived. The right was the path that the explorers always took to leave the village to explore the unknown realm. It was overgrown and hard to see. It was also a route that her mother told her not to take. Every day that she walked home, she was faced with this decision. Turn left, and life continues as it always has. Turn right, and the possibility of something else. Why can't I have a little adventure like those explorers, she thought. Looking at the sun to gauge the time, she decided this time to walk along the old path for just a short while. She should still have enough time to finish her chores before dinner and reading time. She walked as quickly as she could on the overgrown path. It was soft and squishy and covered in vines and moss. Though the birds seemed to sing more loudly as she walked along, the path didn't reveal any secrets to her. After a time, she decided that she should turn back. This path is no different than the others in the village, just more overgrown, and whatever adventure it once held has long since vanished, she thought. Just as she was about to turn around, she came upon a clearing. In this clearing, there were what looked like stone benches and an old broken well. This must have been a meeting place or place where the explorers rested before continuing on their journey, she thought. The bushes around the clearing were full of berries, which she picked and enjoyed, covering her mouth with their juices. This walk wasn't disappointing at all, she thought. At least I got a delicious snack. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw what looked like a box made from rocks, which had been blown over, perhaps by the storm they had at the end of the summer. As she walked closer, she noticed something inside. I wonder what this is, she thought. Lifting the rocks off the top of the box revealed a large, leather-bound book, locked shut with a metal clasp inside. When she tried to open it, she realized that she needed a key or some kind of tool. Looking at the sun, Esther realized the time, stuffed the book in her bag, and ran off back down the path. Arriving at home, her mother met her outside. You are late today, little one. What have you been doing? I haven't been doing anything, just like every day in this quiet, boring place, Esther replied. I like the quiet, her mother replied. Don't you ever want to know about the world beyond our village, where the birds learn their new songs in spring? or experience the stories for yourself that used to be told to me when I was younger? Esther said somewhat impatiently. I like the simplicity of this place, Esther. Shirewood provides us with all we need and none of the things that we don't. But what about adventure? What about the unknown realm? The unknown realm? Don't talk about such nonsense, child. No one who has ever traveled there has come back to speak of its beauty or its importance. All the adventure you need can be found here with your people. Now, 
What about your chores? Finish your work quickly and come for dinner. Then we will do some reading before dark, and then it's time for sleep. Sighing, Esther said, oh, Yes, mother. And off she went to feed those animals that in turn fed them. Her mother walked into the small house to finish preparing dinner. She saw and recognized the stains around Esther's mouth and knew where the berries that caused them came from. She sighed and worried, like all mothers do, about her headstrong child. Why can't she just settle? There is too much of her father in her, she said aloud as she started to sing the song she sang every evening before dinner. That night, Esther helped her mother clean up after dinner while her little brother started his writing practice at the kitchen table. Be sure to wipe off the berry stains from your mouth when you clean up tonight, Esther, her mother said without looking at her. Esther wiped her mouth with her hand and saw the dark blue color on her palm. She turned a shade of red. I don't want you walking down that path again. It does not lead to anywhere you need to go. Come straight home after school. But mother, no buts. Esther went to get cleaned up before she sat down to read and help her little brother with his homework. Hanging above her sink was a picture of her and her father, taken years ago, before he went crazy with the idea of adventure, as her mother called it and went down that fork in the path, promising to return with stories of the world beyond. Only like everyone else, he didn't. She missed him very much. It was her father who brought home the books that she read when she was younger. Stories of the mystical forest, of dragons and unicorns, and all the princesses and kings that lived in castles in the kingdom. He described the Middle Kingdom as a wonderful place, full of magic and fun. Her mother said it was simply too crowded and noisy. Esther was convinced that she would one day see her father again. She sat down beside her brother at the table, lit a candle, the sun had set earlier as the seasons changed and helped him with his homework. Watch your spelling in this sentence, Squirt, Esther said. I'm not much good at spelling and writing, he replied. You are not very good at speaking either, she said, as she poked him in the ribs. Keep practicing and it will improve over time. What is the point of studying all these letters anyways? he asked, frustrated. To learn and to communicate, Squirt. To learn? Can't I just ask you questions and you tell me the answers? Well, what if I am not here? Then what would you do? W where would you be? he asked. That's a good question, Squirt. A question she didn't know the answer to. After the candle burned down to the bottom, it was time for all of them to go to bed to rest. Going into her bedroom, Esther had something else on her mind. The book she found in the clearing. She had left it hidden in her bag. She took the book out of her bag and placed it on her table. It was covered in dirt, so she got a rag and wiped the outside clean. She didn't have much time, as the candle she had in her room would not burn for long. It was meant only to guide you to bed. After it finished burning, it would be completely dark, and the time to be in bed sleeping. Holding the candle over the book, she looked at all the fine detail on the leather cover, the patterns, and what looked like pictures of gnomes, unicorns, and fairies. There were no markings or words that showed what specifically the book contained, 
or who its owner might be. The metal clasp was still locked and could only be opened by the owner's key. She grabbed a small key she had on her table that she had found last summer. It was a rare treasure, as most doors in Shirewood had no locks, as people had no reason to lock them. Shirewood was a very safe place. The key didn't fit, and no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't open the locked clasp with the key. Time was running out. Esther thought for a moment and then remembered that she had a small hammer on her shelf that she used for school projects. The hammer head was hard metal, and the pointy end might just be small enough to fit under the clasp. She could use it to force it open so that she could see what was written inside. She didn't want to damage the book, but she was too impatient to wait to try again tomorrow during light. She dreamed of what secrets and stories the book might contain. The candle flickered. She grabbed the hammer and carefully put the metal pointy end under the clasp. It just fit. With a deep breath, she pushed down on the hammer and forced the lock clasp open. Esther opened the book just as the candle went out. And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>